Hi, my name is Shilin Patel and I'm from Duke University. I'm also a developer for the Internet to Grouper project. This is the admin track of the Grouper training. In this video, I'll be talking about the provisioning service provider, also known as the PSP, and this is part three. In part one, I gave an introduction to the PSP and talked about how to install it with Grouper. In part two, I talked about some of the design decisions around using the PSP in configuration options. This part will focus on a demo of LDAP provisioning. So here's the demo strategy that I plan on using uh, for this part. So as I mentioned in part one, there are several different example configuration files uh, with the PSP. I'm going to start off by using the PSP example grouper to LDAP um, configuration, which is probably the most simplest configuration for LDAP provisioning. Um, I'm going to use bushy style uh, structure for DNs. Um, for this demo, I'm only going to be showing incremental provisioning. And what I'll do is I'll initially configure it so that uh, folders, groups, and memberships will be provisioned. Uh, and then later on, I'll also provision um, attribute updates. So I have a fresh install of Grouper in the PSP here. Um, the only thing I've done so far is configure the sources.xml file. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is open up the psp.xml file and just point out a couple of things in the file. So if I scroll down, um, first there's a, a PSO element for stems. Um, I'll scroll down a bit more and then there's a PSO element for groups. Um, I mentioned in the last part that a lot of the uh, reference in, references in this file point back to the uh, resolver file. So for instance, the all source identifiers ref uh, which is set to group names. Uh, so group names is an attribute definition inside of the resolver file. And so here's the attribute definition. Um, and this attribute definition has a dependency. Um, so in the in, in the Shibboleth attribute resolver, if an attribute definition has a dependency, then that dependency would be resolved. Uh, first. Uh, so here the dependency is all group names connector. Um, after the dependency is resolved, um, the attribute definition will end up returning the group names attribute from the dependency. And so now let me go to that dependency. Um, and this dependency is a data connector. So in many cases, attribute definitions uh, would get their attributes from a, a data connector. Um, here, the, the comment here says that this returns a single group names attribute whose values are the names of all groups matching the filter. So in many places in, uh, in the resolver file, you'll see filters similar to this. Um, and what this is doing is it allows the Etsy stem to be filtered out from provisioning. And the way it does that is by using a minus filter um, where the first part is, um, by default, it's the root stem and grouper, which is um, which would contain every stem and every group and grouper, uh, because by default the base stem uh, is the root stem. And then the second part here uh, is the Etsy stem. So this is an example of how you can configure the PSP to exclude uh, certain groups or folders from being provisioned. I'll go back to the psp.xml file uh, and just show one more thing in the, um, in the group PSO. So here is an attribute defined uh, for description. So what this would end up doing is if a group has the description attribute populated, then it would end up getting populated in LDAP as a description attribute. And the way it gets the description attribute from grouper is by uh, this reference uh, group description. And so in the resolver file, you'll see that group description is an attribute definition again. Um, and it has a couple dependencies also similar to the, the last one. Um, so now we'll update the configuration for the PSP. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is open up the LDAP.properties file and add uh, the host name for my uh, LDAP along with the rest of the configuration. 
set the bind on. I've got my password in an encrypted file, so I'll add the location of that file. If I scroll down some, there's some base DNs that need to be set. Uh, the base DN for groups is going to be um, O equals grouper, comma O equals groups, comma DC equals do, comma DC equals edu. I'm going to use a group of names, object class. Uh, the base stem is going to be left empty, which means it'll be the the root stem. I'm going to use the bushy structure, and that's all for this file. Next, I'll open up the grouper loader.properties file, which is the configuration for the grouper daemon. Um, and I'm going to enable the PSP here. So I'll, I uncommented out the PSP.class, uh, the quartz cron, uh, which is scheduled to run at the top of every minute. I'll set retry on error to true, which means the PSP will retry errors. Um, if you also want to have the full sync configured with the grouper daemon, then you could do that by uncommenting out the full sync that class and giving it a schedule. Uh, by default it's at 5 a.m. I don't want the full sync to run when the daemon starts so I'll leave that uh, commented out and it defaults to false. Now I'll start up GSH. So now I could run the um, the PSP incremental sync by using the, the grouper daemon, but since that would only trigger the updates every minute, um, I'll just run it manually, um, which I can do that by running two um, daemon jobs like that. Uh, the first of these jobs processes the temp change log, and then the second one actually runs the, the PSP job. Um, now I can go ahead and add a, uh, a root stem. I can add a, uh, a group under that. So now I have a group called Duke colon test one. Um, and now if I run the jobs, um, I can go to an alt app browser, which previously had nothing under there, refresh it, and now you've got the, the Duke uh, folder here. And under that, there's a test one group. And initially, there's nothing um, on there except for object class and, and CM, so there aren't any members or uh, a description. Uh, so let me add a member. So add member do colon test one, and I've got a, a subject uh, called test uh, that I can add. And now I can run the jobs again. I can refresh this object, and now you see a member attribute. Uh, for uh, test. I can also set a description uh, on the group. Again, run the jobs, come back here, and the description is set now. I can also delete the member. run the jobs, refresh that, and now the member's gone. And finally, I can also delete the group. Run the jobs, and now if I refresh the Duke folder, there's nothing left in there. So I should mention that the reason why the member attribute was being populated was because of how the psp.xml file is configured. Um, so if you look through the psp.xml file, you'll see, you'll see locations where uh, the member attribute is defined um, and its references. So the last thing I'm going to do is um, configure attribute updates. Um, I'm going to configure the see also attribute to be provisioned in LDAP. 
And so the, the see also attribute is used to store DNs of other objects um, in the LDAP that are related. Um, so I'm going to create a see also attribute in grouper. And the value in grouper is going to be a group name, um, but the value in LDAP will be uh, a DN, and that conversion will happen within the PSP configuration. Uh, one use case of why you might have a, an attribute like C also would be for cross-listed courses if you populate course data in Grouper. Um, that can be a useful way of identifying in LDAP what the cross-listings uh, look like. And so the first thing I'll do now is within the, um, the PSP resolver file um, for the regular LDAP example configuration, uh, there isn't default configuration set up already for um, incremental attribute updates. Um, however, there is in the open LDAP configuration. So what I'm going to do is add a bit of configuration into the LDAP, um, in, into the attribute resolver uh, configuration that I'm currently working with. And so this is just being copied over from the open LDAP configuration. And again, this is being copied over from there as well. All right, so now the f now with the with the C also attribute, the first thing I'm going to do is um, in the let's see towards the top of the file in the group data connector, um, I'll add the attribute for the C also attribute. Now this attribute hasn't been created yet, but I will be doing that shortly as well. And for the PSO definition for uh, groups, I'll add the attribute here so that it'll get provisioned to all that. And so I've added a reference here for group C also, um, which will be something that I'll define in the resolver file. And I've got that defined right here. Let me copy that over first. Um, basically, what the first part here is, is doing is going to be copying the, um, the, the Etsy attribute C also attribute into a, a new attribute called group C also temp. Uh, the reason for that is because attributes with colons in them can't be used in scripts, which is what um, I have afterwards. Um, so here the, the source attribute is group C also temp, um, which was defined up here. Um, and the attribute definitions ID is group C also, which is in the um, uh, in the psp.xml file. 
and this has a de dependency of group C also 10. Um, so what I'm doing here is, uh, first of all, defining the new um, attribute. And if the, the temp value isn't null and it contains exactly one value, uh, so if the C also attribute is populated in grouper, uh, then it'll get the value of that attribute. It'll split it by colons, and assuming that there are two parts um, afterwards, after the split, um, it'll break that apart and create a DN. Um, so the DN will be CN equals uh, the second part um, concatenated with uh, O equals the first part concatenated with the rest of the DN. And again, if you were doing this in reality, um, there's a lot more you can do here. So you can custom define the script however uh, you want. So I'll add that to the bottom of the file. And now I'll start up GSH. So I have to create this um, attribute first. So I created a grouper session. So here what I did is I created an attribute definition that I'm going to use for this attribute. And this attribute definition, attributes using this attribute definition can be assigned to groups. And they can be assigned string values. And now I'll store that. So now I'll actually create the attribute. And so what I'm going to do now is I'll create a couple of groups and add a see also attribute to one of the groups. So I did a group called Duke colon test one. And Duke colon test two. And so on Duke colon test one, I'll add this C also attribute. And so now I can run the jobs, the changelog jobs, and then go to my LDAP query browser. I have two groups created. Um, and the first group, test one, uh, has a C also attribute um, where the value is CN equals uh, test two, comma, O equals duke, comma, O equals grouper. Uh, and so forth. So that's the DN of the second group. Uh, but the value in LDAP that I set was um, Duke colon test2. So the attribute resolver um, was used to convert that group name into a DN. So that's all for this tutorial. Uh, you can click on the closed link in the video description to reinforce your knowledge of the PSP. Uh, and here are some links with more information. Thanks.